Okay, in a previous video we went through all of the details of Stokes' theorem and we proved a very special case of it. And so in this video what I want to do is do an example where we verify Stokes' theorem. That is, we calculate this left hand side and this right hand side for an example and show that they're the same. But before we do that, let's just recall Stokes' theorem. So the basic idea is you have a nicely defined surface in R3 and C, which is a simple closed curve that bounds that surface. And then you've got this nice vector field um, which has continuous first partials on a region which contains your surface. Then the line integral over the simple closed curve of the vector field is the same thing as the surface integral of the curl of the vector field. Okay, so for our example, we want to look at the vector field z comma x comma y, and the surface is the top half of this thing x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. So in other words, that is a sphere of radius a. So that means we need to figure out what that bounding curve is and then go ahead and parameterize everything. So we'll do the surface integral first because that's kind of the most painful and then we'll do the line integral second. So let's go ahead and draw this surface real quick. So notice, uh, like I said before, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared is a sphere, but this says just take the top half of that sphere. So the top half of that sphere will be everything above the xy plane, including the xy plane. So we've got something like that. Notice I'll maybe like draw some more circles in here like that. So this is our sphere S. So here we're assuming that this is uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals a squared. And then for later on in the game, we'll have to use the fact that the bounding curve is down here. So it is this circle that's in the xy plane. So that means we can draw, we can write that in the following way. So notice this is x squared plus y squared equals a squared with z equals zero. So that's obviously the bounding curve because that's where the surface um, intersects with the xy plane. In other words, where we would separate the top half from the bottom half. Okay, so now the first thing that we want to do is parameterize the surface. And you can either parameterize this using rectangular coordinates or using spherical coordinates. And so what I want to do is use spherical coordinates. And so that means we need to take x equal to uh, rho uh, cosine theta sine phi, y is going to be rho uh, sine theta sine phi, and then finally z is going to be rho uh, cosine phi. So those equations will fill all of our three, but we only want to be along this top half of the sphere, which means we're going to set um, rho equal to a. So in other words, we're fixing it at this number a, and then we want theta comma phi, so to be inside of the intervals 0, 2 pi cross 0 pi over 2. And so in other words, that's like our region D. And so why is that the case? We'll notice 0, 2 pi for theta gives you the circle all the way around like this. And then 0 to pi over 2, remember that is the angle for phi, which is measured from the positive z axis, and that pi over 2 takes you down to the xy plane. Okay, so now rewriting this, we would maybe write s of theta comma phi equals, so we'll take this as our x value, that as our y value, and this is our z value with rho equal to a. So we have here a cosine theta sine phi a uh, sine theta sine phi and then a cosine phi. Great. So that's our parameterization for our surface. Again, where our theta phi values come from here. So I'll go ahead and rewrite that just for um, completeness. So 0, 2 pi cross 0 pi over 2. Okay. So there we've got the parameterization for our surface. Fantastic. So now let's recall what we need in order to calculate this surface integral. So the surface integral over S of the curl of F uh, dot dS, 
So that's going to be equal to double integral over d, where d is defined by, again, this region right here in the theta phi plane. Here, this should be theta comma phi. Uh, of, again, we have del cross f, but that is going to be dotted into s theta cross s phi, and then dA, where that dA is happening in this region D. So that means we need to calculate this del cross F, and then we need to calculate this S theta cross S phi and see what we get. So again, del cross um, F, so we can think about that as the derivative with respect to X, the derivative with respect to Y, the derivative with respect to Z, cross product with this vector field x comma y, x comma this vector field z comma x comma y so I'm not going to do that cross product because it's quite simple but what you get here for the curl is just this uh, nice vector 1 1 1 okay and then furthermore um, we have s theta cross s phi so again, I'm not going to do that. On the channel before when we did surface integrals, we calculated this kind of thing before. I'll just write down what you get. So minus a squared cos theta sine squared phi, and then minus a squared um, sine theta, and then minus a squared cos theta uh, cos squared phi, and then finally minus a squared uh, cos phi sine phi. Great. And now let's just go ahead and look at that and make sure that it is positively oriented. So assuming that when we get to it, we're going to orient the curve in this direction so that when we walk around it, the region is to our left. That means we need to put an outward orientation on uh, the surface. But does this correspond to an outward orientation? And the answer is no, it does not correspond to an outward orientation. Because notice these minus signs are going to mean that we're pointing in. But there's actually an easy fix for that, and that is just to change the order of these. So if you recall from the cross product at the very beginning of a course like this, if you change the order of the cross product, you get a negative value. So in other words, like the vector u cross v is equal to negative the vector v cross u. So if we change this from theta phi to phi theta, that's going to change all of these minus signs to plus signs. And now we have this oriented in a way that will work with the orientation that we're going to put on the curve later. Okay, and that means I'm going to change this down here. So here we have uh, phi and then theta. Great. And now we can go ahead and do this. So notice this is going to be the double integral over d, where again d is going to be defined like that when we get to it, of, and then del cross f, which is 1, 1, 1, dotted in with this. But that's nice because when you dot something with the vector 1, 1, 1, you just take the sum. So that means all we need to do is take the sum of these. So I'm going to go ahead and factor an a squared out. And then notice here we've got a common factor of cosine theta. So I can factor a cosine theta out of that. And then that leaves us with sine squared plus cosine squared. But sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we get, just get cosine theta. And then this is plus uh, cosine phi sine phi. And then dA. So that's what we get for this curl dotted with S phi cross S theta. Now the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and factor an a squared out of this, and then I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, and then the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta uh, plus cosine phi sine phi, and then we have d phi d theta. Okay, great. Okay, on the last board we worked down the surface integral side of Stokes' theorem to this. So the surface integral of the curl of f is equal to a squared times this double integral. Now the next thing I want to notice is that this guy right here is only a function of theta, and this guy right here is only a function of phi. So I'm going to go ahead and split this double integral into the sum of two double integrals, and then use the fact that those are only functions of one variable to do a simplification. So 
this is going to give us a squared times, now we've got the double integral of uh, 0 to pi over 2, 0 to 2 pi of cos theta d theta d phi. So notice I changed the order of integration there, which I can do by Fubini's theorem, um, to put the theta integral on the inside. And then this is going to be plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine phi cos phi d phi d theta, where again, um, I left the order of integration the same there. Okay, so now let's just real quickly look at what this is. If we take the antiderivative of cosine, we get sine. And then if we evaluate sine at two pi and at zero, we get zero. So this thing actually goes down to zero. Okay, great. And now, notice this guy is going to maybe require a u substitution. Let's let u equal sine, and then that means du will be cosine theta d, sorry, cosine phi d phi. So let's see, that is going to turn this into a squared, and then the integral from 0 to pi over 2, the integral of u du, and then d theta on the outside, where I should point out that if uh, phi equals pi over 2, that means u equals 1. And then if phi equals 0, that means u equals 0. So we can change our bounds of integration like that. So that goes the integral 0 to 1. Okay, so now we're pretty much good to go. Notice, uh, so now since this is just a function of u, we can rewrite this as a squared times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of just d theta times the integral from 0 to 1 of u du. Okay, but next thing to notice is this value is just gonna give us two pi. This value is gonna give us a half because the antiderivative of u is u squared over two. So this guy is just going to give us uh, a squared times pi. Notice the half here will cancel the two pi there so we get pi a squared, which is kind of a nice result because that's just the area of this circle at the bottom. Okay, great, so we got pi a squared for this side. Now let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll do the line integral part. We just got done doing the surface integral side of Stokes' theorem and we found out that that value was pi a squared. Now along our verification, we need to do the line integral sign of Stokes' theorem and hopefully we'll still get pi over a squared, otherwise we made a mistake. Okay, so the first thing to do along the line integral side is to parametrize this curve that is bounding the surface. But notice that is just a circle of radius a which is happening in the xy plane. So we have x squared plus y squared equals a squared and then we have z equals zero. So that means we can take this parameterization, um, again, kind of inspired by polar coordinates. This is gonna be a cosine t, a sine t, comma, zero. Again, zero because we're in the xy plane. And then uh, we know that t is going to range between zero and two pi because we want that entire curve. Now we can go ahead and calculate this side. So we have the line integral over C of f dot dr. So that is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f, which is given by z comma x comma y. But notice z comma x comma y is 0 comma a cos t comma a sine t. So let's just go ahead and write that down. That is z comma x comma y. In other words, that is our vector field f. And now we need to dot that into r prime. That's the formula for a line integral over a vector field. So r prime is minus a sine t and then uh, a cos t and then zero. And then we get dt here. So again, let's notice that this thing is r prime. Okay, so doing that dot product is actually pretty simple because this one has a zero in the first component, that one has a zero in the third component, so we just get the product of the two second components. So this is the integral zero to two pi of a squared cosine squared, so a squared cosine squared t dt. But now we want to use a power reducing formula to simplify this. So that's going to be a squared over two uh, times the integral from zero to two pi of one plus cosine two t dt. 
where let's remind ourselves what we just used here. We used the fact that cosine squared t is equal to one half, one plus cos two t. Integrals of cosine squared and sine squared end up hap happening a lot in these types of problems, so it's uh, useful to kind of keep that in your back pocket. Okay, now we can go ahead and finish it off. So notice this is going to be a squared over 2, and then taking the antiderivative here, we'll have t um, plus half sine 2t evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. But notice plugging in 2 pi and 0 into sine will give us 0. And so all we're left with is what we get when we plug 2 pi into t. So we'll have 2 pi times a squared over 2. In other words, we'll have pi um, times a squared, which checks out. That's exactly what we got for the surface integral as well. So we have verified Stokes' theorem in this case. That's a good place to stop.